The Minister of Territorial Administration, Poor Atanganji, has banned the sale of light arms and machetes, iron rods or items used for construction following some raids in Lower Bafut with the seizing of over 45 cutlasses from separatist fighters. Modalities on the sale of these items in the northwest and southwest regions will be yours in this newscast. More tonight, Government Nursery School Bonasama, formerly used as an isolation center in the Dwalafo municipality has been closed for more than two weeks. Our reporter Oni Ladonet will bring to you details in this newscast. And parents have contradictory reactions to the banning of holiday classes by the Minister of Secondary Education, Professor Nalova Lyunga. And those are our top stories. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining the 6 p.m. newscast today, August 18, 2020. And those are top stories. The sale and purchase of light arms, notably machetes, iron rods, or items used in construction will only be done after prior authorization officers of the Northwest and Southwest region. The, measures is, the measure is contained in a press release signed by the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji, following the atrocities perpetrated by separatist fighters on innocent civilians in the northwest and southwest regions since 2016. The brutal assassination of Comfort Ntumasang in Moyoka and the raids on Lower Bafut saw the seizing of over 45 cutlasses from separatist fighters. And this note will take effect in the days ahead. Insecurity has been reoccurring of in explosives in Yaoundé is raising questions over the security of the country's capital. Experts have called for investigations while urging authorities to take adequate measures to prohibit the phenomenon. Peter and Saussier with details in this newscast. According to Dr. Rao Sumotayo, an expert on security and geostrategic analysis, he believes that the recent planting of explosives in Yaoundé could be the work of separatist fighters. The university don justifies his claim on the mode of oppression. It is true that only an investigation can better determine the origin of these explosives. But one thing is sure, looking at the geopolitical situation, these acts bear the resemblance of Anglophone insurgents who are poised to delocalize the crisis from the northwest and southwest regions. Though not ruling out the possibility of infighting within the ruling establishment, Dr. Sumotayo is upbeat that the aim is to instill fear. The aim of those planting bombs is to instill fear, and if panic sets in, that works to their advantage. So it is important not to fall into their game plan. Security agents in the country's capital city, Yaoundé, have uncovered at least five artisanal bombs, though some have exploded, wounding some people in the city. But authorities have maintained disturbing silence. The Joe strategist thinks that this attitude is a sign of ultimate control. The reaction of Cameroonian authorities indicates that these incidents do not constitute a real threat to security. The second idea could be that the authorities prefer the use of intelligence. Government silence is also interpreted as a move not to spread panic. He, however, cautions authorities to put in place adequate measures to preempt the disturbing phenomenon. And let's now listen to Barrister Emmanuel Ashu Agbo, who has rubbished the training and deployment of the pioneer batch of common law magistrates in the northwest and southwest regions. The, to the senior advocate who was guest on the program, her talk, lament that it is an attempt to francophonize the English legal system. I feel very uneasy when I hear you, you, you talk about that because these are... People, they say, okay, they are common law magistrates. Yes, thank you for giving them the training. 
But at common law, you don't train judges in, in, in any school. You don't train common law judges in schools. They are selected from the bar. So, I, I mean, it is when we talk, these people don't want to hear. You don't train common law magist magistrates or judges in any school. Go to Nigeria. Do you have a school training judges? Go to England. Do you have any school training judges? Common law, when you say common law, they are picked from among the practicing lawyers who have distinguished themselves. So, anyway, we thank them for training our common law magistrates. Uh, that will enable us to at least have some young breed coming up that will sustain common law. But uh, they should know that they, uh, they have to learn to respect the, the norms. At common law, you don't train judges in any school. They are, they are picked from among practicing lawyers. You see, a judge in the common law system is somebody who has distinguished himself in practice. A, 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 a lawyer cannot talk to a judge anyhow because a judge has also already been a lawyer. It, the, the judge is a senior, senior lawyer. Senior lawyer. So you see, it, because the judiciary is one. Yeah, com at common law, it is the judicial system. You don't have lawyers inside, judges inside. No. But they are trying to francophonize our common law system. So that's what they are doing by creating a common law uh, uh, division. That in a, they are francophonizing. Uh, uh, exactly. I was coming to God, that. They are Is that a mistake? Is that a mistake for government to create the common law I section? I said they are the francophonizing our common law practice. So they should not pride themselves of uh, having done anything because it is a francophonization of common law. If they want to respect common norms, they should select, they should allow us to put in place a system wherein our judges and magistrates are picked from among the practicing lawyers. Take you to the Douala 4 municipality and we talk health. The government nursery school Bonasama that was being used as an isolation center in the Douala 4 municipality has closed its doors for more than two weeks. Reasons, according to sources, is as a result of the unavail unavailability of salaries and other bonuses. Only Ladonet went down to that area and gathered the following details. The government nursery school Bonasama, which served as a screening center in the Douala 4 municipality, has become a shadow of itself. On visiting its premises today, 18th August 2020, just the posters pasted on the wall spoke of it being a screening center. Out of curiosity, we moved down to the Bonasama district hospital asking for the whereabouts of its staff, but got no information. However, some sources met say this center has been locked for over two weeks, reasons being the demotivation of staff due to the inavailability of salaries and other bonuses. It should be recalled that on the 13th of July when the decentralization plan was launched in this center, some shortcomings were raised by its staff. Since July 17, 2020, the day this screening center was created, we have faced several challenges which have slowed down our work. Firstly, the absence of a cleaning agent, the absence of a security officer, the absence of neck batches for patients, the absence of chairs because the funds allocated to take care of these patients are all exhausted, communication credits for staff, the lack of internet connection to send out results, a speech made in the presence of administrative authorities in littoral, including the governor and the regional health delegate. One month later, this center is closed down. A closure that takes place after the minister's tweet on the fear of a second wave of contamination. The systematic wearing of face masks against the coronavirus is gradually losing its team in the littoral region, said to be one of the most affected, the second most affected city in the country. Environs now walk the streets without the fear of contamination. Catherine Kone went down to the streets and has these details. The compulsory wearing of face masks as instructed by the government and the World Health Organization to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 is gradually losing its steam. Douala being the second most hit city, some persons could be spotted without face masks. I feel uncomfortable wearing it. I don't breathe well, but I have it in my bag. But unfortunately, since it's not really obligatory, 
I walk freely without it. I'm in the habit of wearing my mask. I didn't wear it today because sometimes I feel suffocated. I have problem breathing. Though not respecting the barrier measures, the inhabitants affirmed on the existence of the dreaded disease. But, uh, the mask that people put on, or call it a mask, is just because uh, we are afraid of the sick. But whatever you do, God is the master of everything. So pray for God that God is the one who takes care of us. Oh, la maladie, c'est. COVID 19 is a disease like any other disease. If someone contracts it and dies, it means it's his time. This part of relaxation of barrier measures, the government has been constant in raising awareness and calling for the compulsory wearing of face masks by all. Following the decision of the Minister of Secondary Education, Professor Nalova Lunga, to stop holiday classes, parents in the littoral region have reacted uh, differently to this press release as some think their children must go to school and obtain knowledge. Crystal Asexuele with the following details. Following the decision of the Minister of Secondary Education, some parents believe that COVID-19 cannot be a reason to prohibit the organization of holiday classes in private and public schools. Bien parce que moi, les enfants sont à la maison non seulement ils sont ils pavent partout. Ils sont toujours exposés. Donc je ne vois pas la différence. Je trouve que c'est mieux d'aller même à l'école au lieu de rester au quartier et être plus exposé. Et nous les parents qui sortons de la maison, nous savons pas parfois où il y a les enfants. Et les enfants sont devenus même plus faibles que jamais. Depuis au moins quatre mois, ils ne travaillent, ils ne font rien. Ils sont au quartier, ils tournent, ils tournent. Quand tu prends le cahier maintenant, tu le livres, tu dis à un enfant de lire, il n'arrive plus à lire. Non seulement au quartier, ils se baladent partout. Il fait n'importe comment, il est plus exposé. Moi, je me dis qu'en allant à l'école, même là-bas, c'est mieux. Parce que le ministre, il fait mal de suspendre les, les cours de vacances. I believe it's wrong for the minister to suspend holiday classes. Children have been home for close to four months, and the more they stay at home, the more they will forget all that they had been taught at school. It's better they go for these holiday classes. The minister's decision is, however, not understood by many parents. On the other hand, some group of parents believe that the minister is within her rights and must enforce the regulations. The minister has reason to stop the ongoing holiday classes. When holidays are given, it's good for children to rest and not be at school. Considering that my daughter has spent almost three months at home, it was the best option for her to do holiday classes. However, the minister's decision is understandable because health-wise it's not certain how effective the measures put in place by the school to bar the way from the pandemic and to preserve the health of the children. It's best for them to stay at home. This decision was made in a press release signed on August 14 by the Minister of Secondary Education, Nalova Lyunga Egwe, banning the organization of holiday classes in schools. Reason given in the press release document, the fight against the spread of the novel coronavirus disease. The rainy season has a way of influencing our attitudes at different levels, ranging from the clothes we wear to match with the necessary and appropriate accessories to fit in with the season. Christelle Asexuele went out to town to find out how people are coping with the rains and how they dress and has the following details. The inhabitants of the littoral region of Douala are steadily accommodating themselves with the appropriate and necessary accessories to ensure that they brave the rainy season with all serenity. Si concerne la saison pluvieuse dans la région du littoral, moi particulièrement, bon, vous n'êtes pas. In order not to damage my clothes during the rainy season in Douala, I endeavor to dress up to fit in with the season, just like my jacket you see on me, and my waterproof boots to ensure I am comfortable during the season. These particular changes in habits and practices are made to fit in with the season. 
s'accommoder désormais du parapluie. C'est un accessoire qu'on avait laissé au balcon. Depuis we are forced to accommodate ourselves with umbrellas, an accessory we had abandoned on our balconies for a while, and waterproof boots instead of our ordinary shoes to prevent them from getting worn out by the rains. We are also obliged to accommodate ourselves with raincoats because there are some days here in Douala when the rains are uncontrollable and unnerving. Se fait vraiment, vraiment, vraiment pressante et énervante à la limite. However, after this period, these accommodations and accessories are abandoned and only resurface during the next rainy season. Nearly 12 months since journalist Samuel Wazizi, CMTV News broadcaster, took his last breath in custody. His lawyer, barrister Emmanuel Nkea, reveals that authorities have maintained sealed lips on the circumstances that led to his demise. Details in the following report. One year on and the circumstances that led to the death of Samuel Wazizi has not been revealed. According to the lead counsel of the disease, Barrister Emmanuel Kea says, We have not been made part of the process. If there is any investigation going on by the state, we have not been invited. We have not been requested. To the family has not been invited. So we, we, we have been left in the dark. And uh, uh, this is what we are trying to challenge before the court to say we have to to be part of it we want to be part of it we want to know because there are certain questions that we will add and there are certain information that we will provide that would uh, uh, you know shed better light on uh, maybe not only the where the cops is but the circumstances surrounding his death he added that neither him nor his family members know the whereabouts of his cops we, we, we have never seen his cops we have never known where the cops is uh, so we, we assume that the corpse is in the custody of the state because, uh, in fact, one of the prayers that we were asking was that uh, the court should make an order for the state to transport the corpse to Buya to his family because that is where he was arrested, you know, and that is where his family is. Mm -hmm. but, but we don't know. That's why, that's one reason I'm saying to you that... Samuel Wazizi, who was confirmed dead by the spokesperson of the Cameroon Army, Captain Siri Atomfak, was accused of being a logistic officer to several Amazonia groups, providing logistics to separatist fighters on entrenched camps of Masoma and Mukamba, and coordinating the logistical operation of other terrorist groups operating in the faculty division, including Man's Court for Life, one for all and the fear of the mountain known as a special terrorist tax group. Samuel Wazizi, the CMTV Pigeon News broadcaster, was arrested on August 2nd, 2019 by elements of the Muya District Police Station. 300 days after his arrest and mysterious disappearance, the latter was only confirmed dead on June 5th, 2020, whereas the released from the Ministry of Defense stated that he died on 17 August 2019. International page, the United States and Poland have signed a deal to boost the U.S. troop numbers in the country and to create a permanent U.S. base there. It follows an earlier U.S. decision to withdraw an L to withdraw troops from Germany. Many European allies uh, see it as a political move following dispute over defense spending among NATO allies, but all the others argue that the redeployment is essential to meet threats from Russia. Details with the VOA. There are already around 4,500 U.S. troops in Poland, part of a rotating deployment in Eastern Europe. The new agreement between Warsaw and Washington will make that deployment permanent with an additional 1,000 American troops on the ground. The headquarters of the U.S. Army 5th Corps will also be relocated to Poland from Germany. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo signed the deal Saturday during a visit to Poland. Troop levels matter. Uh, the number of soldiers someone has someplace as a former tank officer, I, I know that. 
The deployment is strategically significant, says analyst Jonathan Isle. This is about uh, a deterrence, a deterrence to Russia and a reminder to all Europeans that all member states of NATO are entitled to the same security guarantee. Poland says the deal will help defend against threats from Russia. It is important to our security and it is important that they should be deployed in Poland and not in Germany. President Donald Trump announced plans last month to move 12,000 U.S. troops out of Germany, accusing Berlin of failing to meet NATO defense spending targets. He said around half would be sent home, with the rest deployed to other NATO allies. We're protecting Germany, so we're reducing the force because they're not paying their bills. It's very simple. U.S. officials say the partial withdrawal of troops from Germany and the deployment in Poland are not linked. Berlin has warned the moves could weaken the NATO alliance. Analyst Jonathan Isle says changes are long overdue. But in reality, what it is, is a proper recalibration of the alliance more than 30 years after the end of the Cold War. What is the point of having uh, many troops massed in Germany for purely historic reasons, but having no troops uh, in the countries that feel most vulnerable and are indeed most threatened by threatening noises from Russia? NATO allies deployed several thousand troops in Eastern Europe following Russia's forceful annexation of Crimea and invasion of eastern Ukraine in 2014. Moscow has described the presence of U.S. troops in Poland as a threat to its security. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London. Newscasts. Thanks for watching. Keep watching STV for more interesting programs. We will be back tomorrow with more information from around the country. Thanks and good night.